Love is a much more reliable guide, and, and that bonded faith in a marriage is a much more reliable guide. This is why, in the long run, I am optimistic. If Western civilization, like a spoiled child, goes down the drain, something better will replace it. There's a kind of, of uh, uh, I don't know, you'd call it a, uh, a capitalism of the spirit. Uh, that's, that's the wrong image because bad money drives out good. I'm saying that uh, morally good money drives out bad. Hedonism doesn't work. It, it's self-destructive. And if the human race survives, something better will replace it. We will learn. Well, hedonism, hed hedonism doesn't work technically. Like we looked at the effect of positive emotion on decision making. Okay, so to pursue hedonism is to suppress negative emotion, let's say but also to pursue positive emotion. And those can be technically differentiated neurologically and psychologically, conceptually. They're completely separate systems. They're mutually inhibitory. They run on different biochemical pathways. Uh, what happens when you're hedonically, uh, when you're in the midst of a hedonic experience? And the answer is you get short-term and impulsive. And a lot of the pure operation of the hedonic system is short-term impulsivity. And so, the pathology of hedonism technically is mania, and it's the counterpart to depression, let's say. And manic people, they want to do everything at once, and they're unbelievably impulsive. And so they can't make good decisions. And you might say, well, if your philosophy is hedonic, then whatever makes you happiest is a good decision. But then you see pathologies of hedonism that produce impulsivity. And the way out of that is to recognize that it's sacrifice that's the right replacement for hedonism. Because you might say, well, I should be self-centered. We, we, we talked about this earlier. It's like, well, do you mean the self that is going to drink a quart of vodka tonight and then be hung over tomorrow? Or do you mean the self that's going to sustain itself wisely and carefully over a 40-year period, let's say, in a properly sustaining marriage? And so it isn't even hedonism. It's narrow, impulsive immature two-year-old hedonism. And that is not a solution. This is why there are no convincing movies about heaven, because our hedonism has generated this notion of heaven as supernatural hedonic pleasure, whether it's the beatific vision or, or, or music or, or golden streets or whatever. Uh, we're bored by that. That's not it. We don't know what it is, but, but that's certainly not what it is. Problem of boredom goes, goes, goes deeper than we think.